What's up, everybody? Today I'm going to be comparing the Milwaukee M12 Fuel cutoff tool to the DeWalt 20 volt cutoff tool to decide which one I like better and uh, which one I recommend. Hint. Let's get into it. All right, so why would I prefer the DeWalt? We're, we're going to cover all the reasons why I think this one is worth the extra money. Right now, you can actually get this a few dollars cheaper than this, literally like $5 cheaper. But I'll leave all that stuff in the description. So let's go ahead and get into it. First off, my biggest thing and my biggest gripe with all Milwaukee M12 tools is the ergonomics. This handle is so fat. And I have pretty big hands, especially for my height, but my fingers aren't really long. And someone in the comments said, Milwaukee M12 tools are made for real men. No, no, they're made for Yetis, okay? They're made for Yetis. So I don't like the way this feels in my hand, but the DeWalt, oh gosh, I mean, it is, oh my God. This feels like, a relaxing bed at the end of a long day putting it in your hand that's how that feels okay um so there you go the ergonomics is way better on this thing uh and that's what i like so while we're here let's just talk about switching it from reverse to forward that's very easy on this um and it's easy on the milwaukee as well not as easy it's a little squishy it feels like when you push it over to forward mainly because this guard is in the way. Now you can use both of these tools without the guard. Uh, and we'll go ahead and get to that right now. But before we take the guard off, I want to just talk about it a little bit. Um, here on the DeWalt, they both have this window on the side. But on the DeWalt, you can flip this thing up very easily to get to this, to unscrew it, to change the blade out. Now on the Milwaukee, you cannot do that. You'll have to unscrew it, which... How convenient is that? Unscrew it to do that. So you have to take this entire shroud off to change the wheel. Don't like that. Moving on, let's talk about the the depth gauges here. So they're both the same. You you unscrew them and you slide them. But I like the DeWalt's better because it's easier to read the numbers. They're all they're actually etched out, um, but they're darker against this lighter gray and the contrast. Just works better to me now on the milwaukee this is kind of just looks like sheet metal um it's going to get ugly real fast i have never even used it and still it's already scratched up and on the back these are notched out as well but they're all the same color right even the arrow to show you where to stop the gauge is the same color as the side now it's shinier against that matte black but you know that's harder to see on the DeWalt, I don't even, I mean, you could clearly see the arrow right there. So this is a little easier to, to work with. Now, everything is not all rainbows and sunshine with the DeWalt. I hate this. This whole thing, how it locks in place, you can tell this is proprietary. And what happens when DeWalt decides, yeah, we're not going to make this, what's it called? Air lock or something. We're not going to do that anymore. And now you have an obsolete tool, right? Or an obsolete accessory. Milwaukee's is just like, oh yeah, no, it's just a hole. You can just use anything. Now, you may be wondering, why does yours look like that? Because, sorry, I'm trying to focus. My camera does not like this ugly piece of tape I put on there. But I had to put something on there in order to make the holes fit on there. So I had to make this just a little bit thicker in order for it to fit and then tape it to it. So while that's not ideal you can make it work with anything so it's more universal than the dewalt is with this proprietary mess here now let's talk about getting this off let's see if i could do it with one hand you do them both the same um you unscrew this open it all the way up since one hand you're gonna want to tighten it a little bit and then you just push this little release here up oh, boom comes off just like that very easy now let's do it with the milwaukee well, it's on the back here. Oh, okay. So even with this, turning this, it's very close to the base of the plate here. So it's hard to turn. Right? It almost hits that. And it's not a lot of space for your fingers. Now, 
it's a lot more space obviously and we're going to push this and there's not a whole lot of travel to this this even though it's already at the top it looks like there's a lot more travel to it see and that feels more secure you feel more confident this not a lot of travel you push it in and it falls right out as well oh, the blade anyway, there you go um so on the inside you see when you push it there's that little red thing there and that moves back so there you have it now both of these interestingly enough have blades in them and i still i do like how the milwaukee sits while it has a blade in it but this that's kind of irrelevant when you're looking at the base this is a lot thicker than a dewalt and a dewalt the motor is a lot skinnier even though the the, the dewalt's motor is a lot more powerful which is kind of crazy we see that from the torque test channel this being a 12 volt tool and this being a 20 volt it's a lot lighter and it's more powerful so one more feature i want to point out in order to change the blade you got to get a little island key and at first i'm like oh oh these tools and these island keys i hate that there's no onboard storage but look guess it is bam ha ha the milwaukee has no such thing and you better just have an allen key ready i don't even think it came with one because i just went into the bag and i didn't see one but uh it might be one in there but still it's not on the tool and that's really where you want it so now let's go ahead and pop the batteries in and listen to the sound all right first up we have the dewalt let's go ahead and listen to that in ford and of course it's still variable trigger Oh, wait. No, it's not. It's not a variable trigger. Let's see if the Milwaukee's a variable trigger. No. No variable triggers over here. And unfortunately, I have a 4-hour battery in here, but it's down a bar. It's going back and forth. It's not fully charged. It looks like it's going down a bar. There we go. Went down one just now. Keeps going back and forth. Okay, no variable speed on this either, but I had to go change the battery because so a 6 amp hour battery where that one's a 5 amp hour battery. I had a 4 amp hour battery in here before, and that's the thing with the M12 batteries. There's no indicator on it, so you can't tell whether they're fully charged or not. All right, so let's go back to listening for sound, starting with the DeWalt. Let's pay attention to the brake as well. Okay, now the Milwaukee. I don't know what that extra sound is that kicks in, which is ironic because it wasn't doing that with the 4 amp hour battery that wasn't fully charged. So this thing really likes either 6 amp hour batteries or fully charged ones. Let's do that again. That sounds terrible. Break. All right, that's this. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, as I'm holding this more, I'm getting fatigued by on my middle finger here. Uh, Milwaukee loves to push these plastic bottom pieces out, and I don't like it. They dig into my finger. This is not as bad, but the weight is on my middle finger, and it's starting to bother me uh, now, especially with this big fat grip. So the other thing I want to check out is the LEDs. They both have pretty good light, but ironically, the Milwaukee has this hyper white light and the DeWalt, which is on the bottom, you can see how bright that is. That is super bright. Um, it's yellow, has a yellowish tint, so it lights up the area a little bit better, but it's weird because it's like yellow and then kind of goes to hyper white up there. Maybe it's because the base is yellow. I don't know if that was intentional or not, so I don't really know what's going on with that, but... I do like the light there. Um, it's brighter on the DeWalt. And they both can stand up when you have the larger battery and the Milwaukee. And changing out the blades is identical. You push this in and you'll use your Allen wrench, wherever it is, and turn it clockwise in this. You, everything's opposite view. You turn it clockwise 
to get that out. Same deal over here with the DeWalt. You turn it clockwise to get out counterclockwise to tighten it up. And with these guards, it's simple. You just rotate them. Just like that. And on the DeWalt, same deal. Although it's harder on the DeWalt than the Milwaukee. So that's a, a little minus mark for the DeWalt. But overall, I still do like the DeWalt. It is more powerful. Right now, it could be half or $5 cheaper. Um, I like the onboard storage. I love the onboard storage. I love the ergonomics. And uh, yeah, to me, this one makes much more sense. Also like the dust route a little bit more. I don't like this part right here which will prove to be a problem in the future, I think. But, um, yeah. So, uh, the other thing I want to show you guys, yeah, you see this sheet metal. I showed you that earlier, but I didn't show you the DeWalt. It has, like, this powder-coated finish. Very nice, and I think this will hold up well over time. But, you know, we'll see, because this could be a, a cheap powder coat job, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels very rugged, and I think that that will stay looking better much longer. So, hopefully this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.